Brothers and sisters and friends, good morning. Good to see every one of you. Cold morning. But the Lord is with us. Give us that fire, the warmth. This morning, you know, we can hear all this amazing testimony. And when I, when I hear from some of them that actually went there, they say the power of the Holy Spirit is in them. And um, one of the members, Derek, oh, he filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. He going all out and keep on talking about it. On Friday, he talked about the story, you know, and how Holy Spirit moved and, and everyone got touched. And that, that's, that's the power of Holy Spirit. When He touch you, you receive it and you know, you know that that is the Holy Spirit. This morning, I want to share a little bit about this, how to overcome fear. And throughout all this emotional series, we can actually see that you know, great things happening amongst us. Um, fear is always in every one of us. We, we always have fear and most of the time we, we, we have that fear creep into us because of, um, I don't know, just caught off guard. And I pray that this morning when we share um, that the Spirit of the Lord will set you free from fear, and fear, there's a lot of meaning about fear. When you look at the word fear, in the Bible, there's uh, Hebrew and Greek meanings, and it's talking about fear, which is afraid, talking about fear that is terror, a fear, but it's also talking about God fearing God, the reverence, the awe, worshipping God. So there's so many different examples of fear. This morning, I just want to share with you guys on what, what fear is all about and how we can overcome fear. There's ones that uh, I have this fear when people are behind me and scare me. And I have this, this problem with me is when people scare me, I won't have any reaction. My reaction is frozen. So there's this time one of my housemates just scared me. She just, uh, out of nowhere, she just come out and I was shocked. But my shock is, I always got frozen. But the minute she, she shout, shout the word, boo, my whole body just trembled. I don't know what's happened. That reaction, it's like, maybe I'm the, the I got slow reaction, you know. So when I got that fear, I was shocked. And then the minute this person just say something, and I was just trembling. That's just fear, you know. So everyone has fear. I'm, I'm sure that, oh, there's another fear that I always have is um, midnight when you have phone calls at 3 o'clock in the morning. That is that, that fear, the fear that something's happened yeah. and you're like, oh. And, and when, when I hear phone call at night, it's, it's just that something well, is happening. So I continue to pray. And that, that's fear that everyone will have fear. But fear will cause us to lose our joy, and peace, right? And so, but when we are in Christ, we should not be fear. We should be set free from fear. You look at Matthew chapter 14, verse 24 to 32. Let's learn from God's word. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. About Three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards them, walking on the water. What the disciples saw, when the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, Is it a ghost? But Jesus spoke to them um, at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage, I'm here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, is it really you? Tell me to come to you. Walk on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over to the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sing, Save me, Lord, he said. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have a so little faith. He, Jesus said, Why did you doubt me when they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. 
So the story is after Jesus feed the 5,000, then he sent them home. Jesus went up to the hill to pray, but get all the disciples to go to the boat and sail out of the, the, the mainland. So they are on the sea. But 3 o'clock in the morning, after a prayer, Jesus actually got made up with them. So he walked on the water towards the boat. That's the, the whole situation. And then what happened? The disciples saw Jesus from far. 3 o'clock in the morning, suddenly you come. Not just disciples, even me will have that fear. I will say, wow, ghosts. Ah. Talking about ghosts, you know, one, 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 one of my, um, you know, the Chinese, they always like to, when, during the uh, boat festivals or even the, the time when they need to clean up the grave, yeah, so they, they go to the ancestral grave, they clean up, they need to uh, worship, and then they burn all these papers and whatnot. So one of my cousins, go to this street, right? So he, he, they, they burn all sorts of things. They burn clothes, paper clothes, right? They burn house, they burn cars, they burn mobile phone. <laughs> There's new mobile phone, iPhone, you know? My dad was there and saw my cousin do that. My cousin said, uh, my, my dad said, hey, you, you burn this phone for grandma. They say, yeah, yeah, it's good. It's a new one, you know? You want the grandma to call you at night, is it? <laughs> he was so shocked. He kept that phone. He did not burn it. He fear of the ghost of grandma will come back to her. Ghost. Turn to your neighbor and say, do not fear ghost. Do not fear ghost. Now, when Peter walked on the water, he heard God, he heard Jesus' voice calling him, and but the minute his concentration was on the wind and the wave, he lost it. He lost it. The fear crept into our hearts. I pray that we as followers of Christ that have the same challenges as everyone, but one thing that we have is we have Christ. Amen? We shall not fear. So don't fear of ghosts. They won't call you at night. <laughs> but without challenges, how are we going to exercise our faith? So challenges is, is actually important to help us. Amen? There's also another story about storm story. Right? In Mark chapter 4, verse 37, uh, 37 to 41, on the same day when, on, uh, when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now, when they had uh, left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other, he, he is actually Jesus, and other little boats, uh, and other little boats were also with him. And the great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that they, uh, it was a ready feeling. He but he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him and say to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they fear exceedingly, exceedingly, and say to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Jesus Christ is always there for us. We need to have faith. When God has faith in us to hear his word and we come to him, and yet, we have no faith in God. Do you think that Jesus will let us die? Do you think that Jesus will let us die? This morning when you talk about fear, let us pray. As Father God, we give thanks to you, Lord, for this morning as we all come together to hear your words. Father, we ask that your word will come into our hearts, hide in our hearts, 
and allowing the Holy Spirit to touch us, give us the power that we can overcome fear. In Jesus' name, we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. There's many types of fear, but I look at there's three major types of fear that we can actually go through. The first fear that we're looking at is the fear of death. Even the disciples, they all fear of death. Because just now, when you hear the story, is it ghosts? They also, they also fear of ghosts. The fear of death because when you lose something, and, and, and there's this fear that like creep in. Oh, I want to call this. Any Singaporeans here? Say hi. Oh, okay. So Singapore, uh, Singaporeans, they have this word, kiasu. But there's also a word, kiasi, uh, scared of death. So everyone's scared of death. But of course, I, I, you know, they also, kiabo, kiasu, kiabo, kiabo, kiachinghu, right? They weren't scared of government, sorry. But anyway, when it comes to fear of death, it's real. Because... You're wondering what happened after death. That is the main message that everyone's a fear of. When you die, you don't know where do you go. The chilling of, of death, food, that, 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 that loneliness, the darkness of grave waiting. It's just like you sit in a roller coaster. Oh, I don't really like roller coaster. But sometimes, you just have to have, you're know, brave, you know, with a friends or a group of friends. So you just say, okay, I'll go for it, right? So when, when the growth cluster actually climb up, slowly going up, you know and you prepare yourself. So date, you know, when, when the time of date is something like this, because I saw how my grandma passed away, right? So the roller coasters going up, 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 you just prepare yourself. The minute it comes down with that speed, you just felt that your heart is still up there. <laughs> That's the whole feeling. And I saw how my grandma actually passed away. When, when, when I talked to her, the whole group, all of my, my, uh, my uncles, my aunties, my parents are all there. And when we talked to her, we said that, like, Grandma, when are you going, you know? Because my, my, my uncle wanted to bring her back to the hometown before she died, right? Then she said, oh, wait, wait, wait. Now it's 11 o'clock, uh, wait for 2, 2 p.m., 2 p.m., I'll go at 2 p.m. And true enough, 2 p.m., she passed away, you know. So we are wait and wait and wait, and she's like, <gasps> <gasps> she don't want to go at 11 o'clock, nothing. It, it's just waiting for the right time, and it's just strange. I mean, when people know that they're going away, they just know that they're going away. Just waited and waited, they... they the heart rate increased, the blood pressure increased, the breathing increased, and then she's like ah, holding it, holding it until the elder son said to her that, Ma, it's okay, you can let go, or I can take care of everything. And that's how she goes, right? So, death is something that is ah, just recently on Friday, I attended a, a, a a funeral of our old friend. Um, he died on the bed peacefully at the age of 78. He closed his eyes, smiled, opened his hand, and willing to let go. After accepting Christ as our Lord and Savior, he shall not fear of death because the word of God is power. What does God say though? You look at Hebrews chapter 2, verse 15. When Jesus died on the cross and he had resurrected and conquered death. Verse 14, since the child, uh, children have flesh and blood, he took two share in, his, in their hum, humanity so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil. In verse 15, and Free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. We shall not fear death because we are not going to perish. In John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son 
that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. If we born once, we shall die twice. What do you mean by that? When you born once and you don't know Jesus, after your death bed, you will die again eternally. But if you born twice, when you're born again, you have natural born and born again, you shall just die once. Amen? And you have eternal life. This is what we're talking about when God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And Jesus also promised us in John chapter 11, verse 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. Our flesh may die. We'll die one day, but God will give us a new body. Amen? But else a lot of time, these are good news. But we have the fear that not bringing this good news to people. Amen? So the first fear is fear of death. But the second fear is fear of men. We just have this fear of telling people about Jesus because we fear of men. Fear, there's the family, that family. We, we have this fear that it's so hard for us to just share the word to our friends or to our families. But I can understand why, because I go through the same thing. We also have all this fear. We fear that the family is not happy when we accept the Christ, or we fear that the husband doesn't like it, or the wife doesn't like it. We fear that our parents doesn't like it. So I hear this before. I say that, why don't you just receive Christ as your personal Lord and Savior if you know it's good? Nah, it's okay. My parents just don't like it. Maybe after they die, then I will come to the Lord. It's just strange and peculiar. Why? Why? If God is so good, why don't we introduce it to our family? That fear and the challenges in us to share the gospel, it's not easy. But our faith in Christ slowly grow and we'll have the courage to face that challenge. Amen? I remember a long time ago, uh, this like when I'm still high school, I know this uncle just next to my store. Yeah. When I'm young, I actually have this store that sell newspaper, steam bun, and also char kway teow. So if, if you ask me to do char kway teow, I actually know how to do char kway teow, right? See ham chow fun, they call it the cockles, cockles char kway teow, right? Fried noodles. Next to me, there's this store. This guy actually do spring rolls, right? But he is really like, he work in a casino as well. You know how they, they actually give away cards. So he work in a casino. For my whole life, I just think that this guy will not come to Christ. And I have no, have that kind of thinking or, or heart to really reach out to this guy. Because I was just new Christian then. I felt that it's like, ah, nah, this guy is like hopeless, he's smoking, he's doing work in casinos. Nah, he wouldn't want God. That is who I am at that time. It's just so hard for me. And I, I understand the fear of men, of reaching out to them and thinking that they might reject us. Right? When you look at this part, I can understand that part because in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25, fear of men will prove to be a snare, but where, whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. You know, that is the time when I'm really young. But then, later on, I found out that there's this lady boss next to his store reached out to him and he accepted Christ. To my shock, it's like, how can this be? This guy is hopeless. But yet, he come to the Lord through that lady boss, which is like really surprised me. From that on, I know that we don't have to doubt God because it's all about him and not us. And 
the Holy Spirit will be the one that actually touched them, and not us. We always think that we have the power. Not really. It's actually God's power. Amen? Amen. In John chapter 15, verse 20, do you remember what I told you? A slave is not greater than the master. Since they persecute me, naturally they will persecute you. And if they had listened to me, they would listen to you. Amen? A lot of times we think that, wow, those people actually listen to us. Not really. A lot of times that we think that, oh, we touch them, we pray for them, and then they accept Christ. Wow, we have power. That power is not from us, but from above. Because the word says, if they had listened to me, they would listen to you. Amen? They listen to the word of God and they will hear from us as well. Amen? Amen. In Psalm chapter 56, verse 3 to 4, when I'm afraid, I will put my trust and faith in you, in God, whose word I praise. In God, I have put my trust. I shall not fear. What can mere men do to me? I've seen people that fear men, but I've also seen people that fear God. One of my friends, it's a long time ago, I saw him that he always claimed that he's a secret Christian. I was thinking, what is this secret Christian? So I thought it's actually in a bad way, but it's actually in a good way because he just hide himself from his father. So every time when he go to church, the dad, if the dad find out, his father will actually pull out the belt and hit him. Wow, this is like crazy, right? And it continued on for many years. And you can see he, he actually accepted Christ because his uh, elder sister accepted Christ. Then he joined the younger sister come to the church. Then the youngest brother also joined him. The father is furious when the younger brother also joined him. It's like the whole family are Christian now. And the father don't know what to do. He gets so upset. And every time, he will, if he found out, he will go to the church and drag the children out of the church. With belt. It's so scary. But my friend, now he's a pastor. The whole family, it's crazy. I just verified with my mom last night. I called, ah, this one and so. Is that all pastor? Oh, the whole family are pastor, man. Oh my, wow, what happened? The fear of God is so extraordinary. And they, they have no fear of the Father's belt. And at the end, the Father comes to the Lord. Because the whole family actually joined the church. And they have CG group in the house. So the fear of man, oh, it just when they creep in, we need to take it out. Change the fear of God. My friend did not fear man but he fear God. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot touch your soul. Fear only God who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Wow. I think for a long time, why my friend, that having that, that kind of Spirit of fear God. Because if you look at Matthew chapter 10, verse 16 to 20, I didn't put it up. You can go back and, and read. Behold, I send you as a sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpent and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils and you in the synagogue. You will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, you not, do not worry about how or what to speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak, for it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of God the spirit of your father who speak in you. Amen? Amen. 
Let us fear God. The third fear that I want everyone to really capture this is fear God. When I look at Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, don't be afraid of those who want to kill you, your body. They cannot touch your soul. Fear only God who can destroy both soul and body in hell. The fear is referring to reverence. Oh, worship God. So we need to understand this part. Look, who on earth that can destroy both soul and body in hell? No one other than God Almighty. You know, even someone that's going to kill you, but they can't touch your soul. But if you don't know Jesus, if someone just kill you, you know, your body and soul will destroy your body and soul will destroy in hell. I'm a person that always you know, talk about God's love, but everyone needs to understand the truth. This is the truth. We always quote, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Wow, good words. But that word, only works when you need to include verse 31. You look at John chapter 8, verse 31 to 32. Jesus says to the people who believe in him, you are truly my disciple if you remain faithful to my teaching, obeying and living according to his word, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Amen? Fear God. So we need to fear God. We, we need to reverence. We need to awe. We need to worship God. And not fear man. In the Old Testament, the Israelites, they have the same thinking as well. No? When Moses actually bring all of them and say that, okay, look, we need to go and see God and talk to him. He want to talk to you guys. The Israelites say, no, Moses, you go and talk to God. Because the fear of God, the reverence is so different. But now, we have that privilege to see God face to face. We can pray, we can worship Him. And that's the privilege that the Israelites didn't have those days. But how are we going to do this part? We need to reverence God. We need to fear Him to the fullness, sense of our words. To fear God is to have a wholesome dread of ever pleasing the Lord. That implies our love for Him as well as our awe of Him. To simply respect Him is not strong enough. But this morning, when we sing the song, we are His children. Amen? We have this relationship with Him. In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 27, the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to turn one away from the snares of death. Fear of the Lord is like a fountain of life. Refreshing words. The Lord provides us spiritual nourishment. He lead us for this abiding relationship with Him. That's what we're talking about when fear of God, fear of the Lord is the fountain of life. In Romans chapter 8, verse 15, so you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when He adopted you as His own children. Now we call him Abba Father. Amen? Amen? Turn to your neighbor and say that, My God is my Abba Father. Do it now. Declare it. I came to the Lord when I'm 17. 
in high school time. I still remember that God is so real in my life. The joy of the Lord is my strength. That having God to protect me and assure of salvation, He's the loving God. And I always remember this part, Romans chapter 8, verse 1 to 2. Therefore, there is now no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of spirit who gives us lives has set you free from the law of a sin and death. Amen? Amen? I always claim that word because you have this good relationship with God. You have no fear. I want to conclude. Conclude with these words. This morning, when Jaden actually shared his word, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, there's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves no man, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Amen. This morning, I want to preach about God's love and God's love in us. Amen. But before I end, I want to end with this. This verse is really encourages me. And I pray that you will encourage everyone. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of sound mind. Now, God has not given us a spirit of fear. We all face various of situation. We have fear. We, we are timid. We are afraid. Fear of speaking in front of people. Fear of confrontation. Fear of rejection. Fear of looking foolish. But God says, the word says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear. Just ask that everyone just rise up. This morning, everyone just rise up. We want to declare this. For God did not give us a spirit of fear. Declare this, that ask God, the word of God, sing in our heart. Can I have the worship team? God's word says, has not, God has not given us the spirit of fear. Amen? When you talk about giving us the power, you know when given, what does it mean by given? It means you already own it. God already bestowed to you. God already grants you the power. The power is in you. Not just that. God gives you the love, the power of love. You know, there are a lot of times that we have this love, but then we can't touch people that we think, oh, we don't have the power. Or we look at people that it's just not lovable. I just hate that person. But yet God calls you, you need to love that brother. You need to love that sister. But that guy, foul mouth, I don't like him. But that guy, when, when I'm like this time, he lied to me. But that guy says something that is really hurtful. I can't take it. But God gave you the power to love. You may be like really hurt inside. But ask God to take away that fear. But give you the power power of love. And the third word that's come, sound mind. What is sound mind? The original Greek, the meaning of sound mind is to calm, to be calm. Not just to be calm, but it's also seen as a self-controlled mind. This morning, let us raise up our hands and say that, God, I need your power. I need your love. And I need a sound mind. Yes. And Father God, we ask, Lord Father God, that you take away this fear because the fear is not from you. Oh yes, Father God, we give thanks to you, Lord. This morning, we want you to reveal to us, Lord Father God, your power. This morning, we want your power. We want your love. 
and we want to have a sound mind, and we believe that the power of Holy Spirit just flow and will touch us and give us your power. Yes, Father God, we give thanks to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. Because we're no longer slaves to fear. Come on, sing it. I am a child. 